Hey, everybody, and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we are starting the press conference of our event that's going on tomorrow. Um, we do have one quick announcement. Um, the main event, Jordan Burroughs versus David Taylor, has been postponed. There has been a positive tracing COVID situation. It will not take place tomorrow night. That is the bad news. Good news is we have our main event, Tamir Mensa Stock versus Adeline Gray going on. And the better news is Wednesday, this week, Wednesday, I believe it's January 13th, David Taylor and Jordan Burroughs are going to wrestle. It will be live right here on Flow Wrestling. We are literally, this is all like happening in the moment. We are looking to put some matches together. Um, if you're watching this and you want to be on this card and you have an idea of somebody you want to wrestle, you just want to be on it, you know us, hit us up, you tweet at us, send us a message however you want to. Uh, let it be known that you want to be part of this event on January 13th. It's going to be taking place in Lincoln, Nebraska. So keep that in mind. But uh, that's the news. Kind of just want to let you guys uh, know that from the start. From here on out, this will be the press conference. We're going to have our athletes two by two coming into these booths, and we'll have our guys in the studio asking them questions. That's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's take it away, JD and David. All right. Thanks a lot, Bader. And man, JD, crazy news. 2021, not, not calming down at all from 2020. And, uh, you know, so we're going to have to make a, adjustments on the fly, just like we have all of 2020. And we're doing That's that right. right now. And and you can see on the screen behind us, we've got a new main event for this card. It's going to be five-time world champ Adeline Gray taking on world champ Tamira Mensa stock in one of the biggest women's matches you can imagine. We have 10 amazing matches on the card in total. And the, the first match of the day is going to be absolutely crazy. I am Super excited for that one. We could see 100 points go on the board, JD. What do you think about this Mitch McKee, Tristan Moran match? Well, I fully expect 100 points to be up on the board. <laughs> it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be really exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's go ahead and bring those first two competitors on. Mitch, Tristan, how are you guys doing so far this morning? So far, not not hearing uh, not hearing audio yet. Oh. Got him now. All right. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mitch. How are you doing? Good. How about you? Doing awesome. Tristan, how uh, how you doing? Doing real good, man. Loving Austin. That's great. Well, hey, uh, you know, we mentioned it before you guys came on, but uh, you guys tend to have shootouts. You have a series that's gone back and forth. You guys have matches that often go back and forth and, uh, you know, guys get pinned. It's anything, anything goes. Um, you know, how are you feeling about a, a match with a super, super high output competitor? And Tristan, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I mean, obviously, uh, Mitch is better at freestyle than folk style, so I've been preparing for that a lot. And again, the series is two to one me, but I mean, to be honest, the one win he has is a lot more important. He did get that All-American. I mean, I only got to wrestle in one national tournament my whole career, and he took away my All-American, you know, so it's it's pretty personal. I mean, I am winning two to one in the series, but his win is, I'd say, outweighs mine. So I want to get as many as I can. You know, and Mitch, I mean, yeah, he, Tristan said it, right? He, he's got the edge, but you got the one that mattered. How do you feel about this series? And, and is this series personal for you, like Tristan says it is for him? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I just, you know, I'm losing the series, you know, one to two, like he said. But, um, and I did get that one that, you know, the All-American, or in the round of 12. Uh, so that one, for me, meant a lot. Uh and obviously every match means a lot and I, I just love wrestling them. And I think it's always a great, great match with, you know, win or lose. I love going out there and competing with, with guys who I know I'm going to have good matches with and score a lot of points with. And, uh, you know, that's what happens every time we go out there. So I'm really excited for tomorrow and I think we're going to put up a lot of points. You guys have met, you know, three times in the past, but not in freestyle so far, Mitch, obviously, you know, you've got uh, a lot of freestyle experience, junior world silver medal, just coming off a U23 national title. Do you feel like freestyle gives you an advantage in this match? Yeah, uh, definitely. Like my freestyle background is pretty, uh, pretty long and um, I've been doing it since I was really young and uh, it de definitely gives me an advantage, but you know, you can't, can't really, uh, look past just, you know, a good wrestler is a good wrestler, no matter the style, you know, someone's going to go out there and compete regardless. And, and you can't really go out there with that kind of mindset. You got to go out there ready to score points, regardless of the style, you know, whatever, what weight class, whatever it is, you just got to go and compete. So that's kind of my mindset going into it, just ready to go compete. 
And obviously, Tristan, you you said it, right? You're the one that brought up the freestyle kind of thing. You've been focusing on freestyle leading into this match. Uh, and, and you're also kind of in a new situation at Askren Wrestling Academy. Talk about your, your training situation and some of the points of emphasis that you've had as you're transitioning into freestyle training. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been loving uh, training freestyle. Got the AWA right here. Been coaching kids. Uh, it's been a blast doing that. And then just uh, Evan Wick is my assistant coach out there. So it's just been me, Ben, and Max, and Evan working out every day. Uh, Jackson Hemauer was down the whole summer while he was uh, transferring to UNC. So it was awesome having him in there, too. And then, yeah, Ben and Max coaching-wise and just wrestling knowledge is absolutely insane. So I've been in the lab getting ready for freestyle, getting working with Evan for all these cards So and his RTC Cup. So it was a lot of fun learning freestyle a lot. I think I like it more than folk style. I do think I'm better at folk style, but freestyle is a lot of fun. That's awesome. And, and Mitch, I mean, you've made a transition as well right now, full-time freestyle training. So you're not balancing mm -hmm. folks down freestyle. How has that transition been for you? And do you think that you're going to see major jumps because of that, that transition? Yeah, I think I will just cause you know, I get to focus on what I'm good at in freestyle and what I need to work on versus, you know, you kind of go back and forth, you know, in the summer, you're trying to fit in, you know, the freestyle and trying to work on stuff, but you only have so much time before the the season rolls around in September. So I think now just being able to focus and, and really get to the little, uh, you know, finer prints of what I need to work on and, and just kind of the little details that will make me, you know, make big jumps uh, going forward. So it's been fun. And, and you know, having Dust, Dustin Schlater as a coach and the amount of knowledge he has is just crazy. Um, and, you know, being able to pick his brain on little tiny details and just how big our RTC is. There's so many guys in the room that, are just incredible. Like Zach Sanders, his technique is, is amazing. And just being able to, you know, work with all these guys on a daily basis and just be able to sit around and talk about moves and work on moves and go into positions and just go into detail. And, and it's just uh, been, you know, really good for me this last couple months. And I think going forward is going to, I'm going to make a lot of big gains here. That's awesome. I know you guys are going to start off the card tomorrow with a bang. Everybody's super excited for the match. Last thing before I let you guys go, I want to know your prediction for, for our new main event, Tamir Mensa Stock, Adeline Gray. Who do you guys see come out on top in this Battle of the World Champs? Tristan, let's start with you. Um, I got Tamara. I think her pace and just her overall attitude, just how happy she is all the time. I mean, she was running around dancing on the practice mat the whole time. I just think she's got too much energy. Can't be stopped. Mitch, what do you think? I got Adeline Gray, baby. Awesome. And it's hard to argue with either one of those picks. Um, guys, can't wait to see you guys tangle tomorrow. Thanks a lot. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Thank guys. you. All right, JD. Man, that first match is going to be awesome. And Over under number of head pinches we see, at least attempted from Mitch McKee. Uh, I mean, I, I'd, set the, I'd set the over under at four and a half. <laughs> what are you taking? <laughs> That's a good line. I'll go under with four. <laughs> okay. All right. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be close. And I mean, that's a match that we've seen before. And, and it's one that like, there are a few matchups you circle and, and no matter how many times you've seen it, you're like, all right, sign me up for that one. Anytime yeah. it happens, that one's going to be awesome. This next one is a match that I, I don't know that a lot of people expected to see. It's a, a couple of women who are coming from different weight classes to square off. Rana Heaton, Desiree Zavala. What are you looking forward to at this matchup? Man, just to see, you know, these two women put on the line. This was one of those late matches that we added kind of later into the card that really made it what it is into the full 11, I guess now 10 match card that is going to put together an awesome night of wrestling. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is one of those that, that we, you know, we, we didn't probably think about seeing, right? They compete in different weight classes against different fields of people. And so I, I'm really very curious in this matchup, really excited to see it. And let's go ahead and bring on Rana and Desiree. Ladies, how you doing this morning? Good, good. That's awesome. Hey, Desiree, you know, we, we've seen you down here in October. You were here during the 195 eight man, and it's great to have you back. How would you feel that that match prepared you to compete in a similar, similar environment tomorrow? Um, I would say a big part is just knowing what to expect as far as like weigh-ins, um, you know, the match order and that type of thing, the way awesome. it's going to flow. Yeah. How did it feel kind of competing in that, in that environment, the, you know, no fans, the lights, how, how did that feel for you? Um, it's weird, but it's something that I'm getting used to. It's kind of the new normal, you know, being in college, that's our all our college competitions are going right now too. So it's a new normal. 
Yeah. And, you know, Rana, you've had a really productive fall competing. Um, how, how do you feel about the progress that you've had both in training and then also the results you've seen in competition in the last few months? Um, I'm just excited uh, to, uh, well, I don't know, to be improving and have a good team teammate now. Now Aaron's out uh, in Wisconsin and I love to see it grow and uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, before you guys came on, JD and I were talking about this is a match that that we we probably didn't expect to see because you guys typically compete at different weight classes. And I wonder how familiar you guys are with each other. Um, Rana, you know, what what do you know about Desiree's style and what are things that, that she does well that you're gonna have to look out for tomorrow? Um, so yeah, me and Desiree actually used to be teammates at Grace Harbor. And uh, we were practice partners a lot. But I know she has a killer double double leg and she's pretty strong so um but i'm just excited to get this match in and yeah have fun with it awesome desiree same question for you yeah it sounds like you guys have, have trained together but you know seeing each other in a match maybe something you didn't know would happen what do you know about rana what are things that she does well and that uh you're gonna be looking out for tomorrow um like she said we were college training partners for a year so i feel like we know each other's style pretty well um I just know she's strong and fast, and um, I'm just excited to be able to wrestle. Uh, I think that she's a great competitor, and we're going to have a good match. So I'm just excited for the opportunity to compete. Awesome. Rana, you're wearing the Wisconsin sweatshirt right now. You kind of touched on it a little bit uh, talking about Aaron, but y'all are kind of building something there in Madison with, uh, you know, Seth and Tristan's here, too. I know he pronounced uh, mostly trains at AWA, but just how beneficial is it to have that environment like that in Madison and to have uh, people here with you in Austin that you train with? Yeah, I think it's awesome. Wisconsin uh, has like a huge fan base, and uh, I think women's wrestling out there is growing a ton, and I think it's awesome that Aaron's on the team now. I know that they're already having some girls wanting to – come out and train and and i know that uh they get a lot of girls on the underground cards so and yeah i think it's really awesome and it's growing and uh yeah i don't know what else to say you know desiree your your situation you alluded to earlier now you're training with the college team on the roster how has a college season felt different for you this year compared to in previous seasons um I would say the biggest thing is just, um, you know, COVID protocol where we're getting tested regularly as a group. Um, we have to practice with the mask on every day. Um, we have to check our temperature every day before practice, that type of thing. If anyone gets exposed, they're quarantined. Um, and as far as traveling goes, a lot of other schools that are in the NAI with us, they're not even allowed to compete. So it's har hard finding um teams that are able to compete with us. And then along with that, a lot of them are having like the rules where say, if you go out of state, you have to quarantine for two weeks. So nobody wants to compete that can. So um, it's just been different in the aspect of we're getting a lot more practice time and mat time as a team versus like com competition time, which is good. I mean, that's good. How does training with a mask work? <laughs> How does that it go? Doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. So pretty much you're just like stopping every five seconds and fixing your mask and then your mask gets all sweaty and you feel like you're getting like waterboarded. You can't breathe. Um, <laughs> but I feel like it has, helps me get in shape because you really have to gasp per, gasp per air wearing a mask. So probably making you mentally nice tough to be too, able to a little bit. Come here and not have to wear a mask. Yeah. Man, well, I'm I'm glad that you'll have the opportunity to compete tomorrow and super exciting match. I can't wait. Before we let you guys go, I'm curious for your prediction for the main event, Tamira Mensah-Stock, Adeline Gray, two you know giant figures in the sport of, of women's wrestling. And uh, how do you see this one going, Rana? Let's start with you. Um, I think they they're both obviously really good, but uh, uh I'm I'm not sure. I don't want to like say anything and then. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I like them both so i won't tell them i, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> well i i don't know kind of I, I know tamira pretty well so that'd be cool if she got the win nice. so 
Yeah, cool. Mine. Desiree, do you have a, do you have a prediction or a, a thought about this match? Um, I mean, I love Tamara. Tamara's awesome, but um, really, I have no idea. I think it's going to be a really great match, and I think that they're paired up pretty. I don't want to say evenly, but I think it's going to be a really good match, and I'm just excited to see the outcome. I think it'd be awesome if Tamara can get the win just because, you know, that's such an amazing opponent to be able to wrestle against. Um, yeah. But either way, I just think it's a great matchup. Man, I do too. I'm excited for it. Good luck tomorrow, and, uh, yeah, you know, have a good day between now and then. I can't wait to see the match. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, J.D., practicing in masks. Can you imagine? No. I really cannot. <laughs> I, I think the only way to make it work is, and I, I've said this around the office, I don't know if I've said it on air, Spider-Man, like a Spider-Man mask. Yeah. You know, something Just a like, full onesie tight suit. Maybe that's a full, yeah, maybe in, you, the team comes out in uniforms, full Spider-Man costume. Maybe you know. cut, cut little holes for eyes so you can see. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think it, it could work could work better than anything. <laughs> and, you know, we, we talked about that Ronna Heaton, Desiree Zavala match being a match we, we probably didn't ever think we'd see. And so is this next one, Nate Jackson, Win Mahalik. Yeah, uh, there's two big questions. It's the weight for Nate, weight for Nate. <laughs> yeah. And then it's where is Win at? You know, because it's been a while since we've seen him compete. He's mostly coaching now. Uh, it's just, how's he going to look? Those are the two big questions yeah, going I'm, into this match. I'm curious about that as well. And, we, you know, we were talking with Win last night and he's saying, I'm 36 years old. I, you know, I don't know that I ever thought I'd be doing this again, but he's ready. He's excited. And, uh, you know, same with Nate. I don't know that he ever expected to be competing at this weight class, but here he is. He's ready to go. He's embracing the challenge. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's going to be a really interesting match for, for those two kind of X factors to those, do those balance each other out to, you know, I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow. I'm super excited. Oh yeah, me too. Well, all right. So I think we're just about ready to bring these guys on. Nate Jackson, Win Mahalik. How are you guys doing this morning? Awesome. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm happy to be back. Man, happy to have you back. And uh, Nate, did you think that two questions? Did you think you'd be coming back at some point to to wrestle here again? And the second question: Did you ever imagine in a million years that if you were going to come back, that you'd be wrestling Win Mahalik? Uh, so first question that I think I would come back here to wrestle, uh, not necessarily, you know, obviously, uh, the eight man really kind of kicked off these type of cards for flow and being in Austin. So I didn't know what that would look like. And it seems like it did pretty well. Um, that's why we're back. And no, I did not think I would be back <laughs> wrestling at two fifteen wrestling when Mahalik. <laughs> Man, I didn't know that I ever expected to see that match either. Um, when did you think? I, you know, obviously you, you had a, a really long and, and strong uh, international career. And when you retired, I mean, you'd been re wrestling for a long time. Did you ever think that, that you would get the itch that you'd come back and compete again? Um, I knew I'd get the itch. Um, it's just kind of in our blood. I mean, I think we're all competitors. But, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to really compete again. And you know, I'm really happy to have the chance. Happy to have you here. And, and you know, Nate Jackson is a guy that I think you can't help but watch. He's super dynamic. Um, how do you see this match going? What are the things that Nate does that you're going to be focused on for tomorrow? Yeah, I think he's really explosive. He's, you know, he lights it up, man. He puts up lots of points, and I like doing that. If you look at my career, I had some matches with some guys that were 35, 30, 35 points, and I like to put up points. So I think um, this match could go a couple ways, but – I think we're both here to put on a show. We're we're gonna score points. We're not gonna not gonna sit around and try and keep it close and win a win a one takedown match or anything like that. So I think tomorrow anything could happen. Nate, how familiar are you with Wynn's career and what are the things that you're looking for and expecting out of this match tomorrow? Uh so like when Wynn hit me up, like uh he DM'd me and was like, Let's put on a show, you know. So I'm big into that. Like I, I wanna score a lot of points. Obviously I like winning, so I don't want to put myself in danger and to lose or whatnot. I had to actually brush up on win a little bit. So, uh, you know, there's certain positions that he's really dynamic in. Um, he's a, he's a quite the athlete as well. Um, so I think it'll be a fun match. There's not any position that I'm really, you know, focused on getting to or, or avoiding, but, um, you know, I think that it's, it's good and, uh, I just want to compete. So I, I think that this is good and he's, he's a challenge. He's a little bit bigger. Um, but you know, I feel pretty good. So looking forward to it. Nate, you were talking about how much you love competing and when just DM'd you and you were like, 
yeah, I'm totally down. And, you know, you're a guy, you've gotten as many matches as anybody uh, since March. You've been put, thrown it on the line. Where does that mentality come from and how has that helped you this past year? Uh, I come from a big family, so I used to have to fight brothers and sisters all the time and uh, like cousins, bigger cousins or whatever. So I'm kind of just built to, to do that. And that's fun for me. Um, that's why I chose wrestling. That's why I love wrestling because you get to do that every day. Um, I'm doing it every day in the room. So what difference does it make for me to do it every day in the room or do it on a big stage? Like it's, it's no big deal in difference to me. Um, I've been wrestling a lot this year, uh, which is cool. I've had a lot of experience and I'm getting more comfortable in that spotlight. Um, but again, it's, it's another match and I'm building to, um, you know, obviously for Olympic trials. So, you know, I got another match at the end of this month against Mark Hall. Um, I got another match in February against Gabe Dean, and then it's going to be about getting ready for last chance. So I'm um, trying to get as much mat time as I can. Um, and then it'll be about, you know, putting in a real good session, training, training session into getting uh, ready for the, the, you know, the trials and the, the last chance. But I don't I don't put too much into any match. So um, I'm going to give it everything I got 100 percent. Um, and then at the end of that, you know, I still have to get better and I still have to um, get ready for those those goals that are coming down the line. When you've obviously be, been uh coaching right and you've had a big year you moved to Campbell uh, and mm -hmm. and you're part of the new regime there um, talk about what has been like for you in your first year at Campbell and who are some of the guys in the room that have I don't know maybe maybe push you or encourage you to compete and then have been helping getting you ready um yeah I think uh I think moving to Campbell's been great love it down there great great support from the university administration everybody honestly um it, it this whole thing came about kind of, kind of randomly when um, Coach Sentez just kind of texted me, asked if I'd be down. And I know I don't back down from challenges. You know, I've been training, training with the guys, wrestling with the guys. We got some, some big guys, some, some good explosive heavyweights and 97 pounders that, you know, I've been scrapping around with. And um, actually, when you guys put on the first eight man, um, I went in the room. They're like, "You guys should, you should try and do something like that." And I'm like, "All right, Flo offers me." offers me a chance. I'll do it. And like, Oh, put it in writing, put it in writing. <laughs> so we have a whiteboard in our wrestling room and I actually wrote on the whiteboard flow offers me a chance on a card. I'm in. So I signed it with my name and all that stuff. It's still on the board. Um, so when this opportunity came, I just jump at it. And I think, you know, for me with our program, where we want to go, the expectations we have, um, it's just the, the role that I want to play. I want to be a leader for our guys. I want to show them you can't back down from anything, no matter what it is. So even if it's last minute, that's awesome. Last thing for you guys, when earlier you said this match could be, it could go a lot of different ways. It could be, you know, it could look very different. I'm curious to know from each of you, what kind of match do you think this is going to be? Is it going to be a, you know, a, a shootout? Is it going to be one where, you know, a lot of the points come in, in flurries early? Is it, what's it going to look like? Um, Nate, what do you think? I don't know. You guys tell me, I mean, when last time I was here, we were talking about Sam Brooks and you guys are talking about how many, points are going to be put up and it was I think it was just me scoring so like I don't <laughs> I don't really look too far into all that I know I'm going to score some points I think that win has some stuff so I might get give up some points um it depends on how ready win is if he's ready then we're going to score a lot of points if he's not ready I'm going to score a lot of points so it's, <laughs> it's that's all that's all I'm kind of thinking about and and a big thing that that Princeton kind of stands for just kind of piggybacking off what win was saying about their program um we're anyone, anytime, anywhere, you know? So if, if there's a per, like if we can wrestle a, a tough duel against Iowa or the Penn States or whatnot, we want to do that. Um, and I'm no different myself and I can lead in that way. Just by showing that I lay it against lay it on the line against anybody. I was just talking to Jaden a couple of minutes and he's like, you want to wrestle? Well, 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 I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm definitely down to do that. So that's just how I'm built. It uh, sounds like Wynn is built that way as well. So it should be a really good match. Awesome. When, what kind of match do you think we're going to see? Yeah, I think it's going to be just like that. I think one of us could, could take control of the match or there could be some flurries with, with both of us scoring. But I think in the end, there's, there's going to be put points put on the board. It's just whoever's ready, whoever's uh, feeling good and whoever really puts it on the line. I think, uh, 
I think the the offensive man's going to really be rewarded. Awesome. Man, lay it on the line. I love to hear it. Super excited. And uh, good luck, guys. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you guys. Yep. You guys take care. All right. Thanks, man. Love to hear that when you say what kind of matches are going to be. And nobody says, well, I mean, I might, you know, I might try to really control the pace. I might try to really slow it down in the hand fight. No, this is like, it's either, let's go. <laughs> it's either I'm going to score a lot of points or we're both going to score a lot of points, but there's no question from either of these guys' minds that uh, they're going to be putting points on the board. So that's. Speaking of which, this next bout, I think we're going to see some points on the board as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, you think about these next two guys, Seth Gross and Zane Richards. And I mean, I think about just even in the last year, right, that crazy one that Zane Richards had with, uh, Zach, uh, with Zach Sanders on the rooftop. Mm -hmm. And you think about Seth Gross and all the crazy matches he's in all the time. Uh, you the, mean every match he's ever in, Everyone period. he's ever in, but <laughs> specifically the one with Joe Colonna beat the streets, right? Yes. I mean, these, these two guys both find themselves in – wild shootouts they are they're all gas no breaks and i don't believe we've seen this matchup before so i think this is going to be uh, one that that should be really interesting how do you see this one going i see a lot of a lot of points going on the board you know seth coming off that big win over gilman can he keep right in that that momentum into this and then into Olympic trials in April. That'd be huge for him. Yeah, you know, and, and Zane has big wins too. He's beat Vito in the past. He's, he's you know, he's looked incredible and has been one of the guys at 57 kilos for a long time in the U.S. that could really make some noise. So I think it's going to be great. Let's bring them on. We got Seth Gross and Zane Richards. How are you guys doing this morning? Doing, doing great. Yeah, doing great. Doing, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, you know, we were talking about it. I don't think you guys have wrestled before, have you? Or at least not on the senior level. No, so yeah, we were in a lot of brackets and stuff, but we 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 never crossed paths in college, right? We were in Midlands, I think, a couple times in the same brackets, NCAs, different things, but yeah, we never we never wrestled. Yeah, yeah, I think a long time ago when we were like maybe in high school, we had one practice sparring session at the Olympic Training Center, and that was yeah. it. Like, yeah, so no no real co competitive sense of uh, you know, wrestling each other. Yeah. You know, you guys are both known to, to get in uh, shootouts from time to time, right? We've seen you guys in these crazy back and forth matches. If this match is a shootout, if this match ends up with, with 30 points on the board, I want to know, you know, which one of you thinks that, that you come out on top? Is that, does that favor you? Seth, if this is a 30-plus point match, is that your advantage? <laughs> I mean, I'm always going to, you know, be, be pulling for myself regardless. So I, obviously I'm going to say myself, but yeah, I'm excited, man. I think that, you know, he's a guy that lets it fly. I let it fly. So we're going to see a lot of fun positions in this match. And, uh, I think it's going to be exciting because, uh, I think just, just stylistically, right. There's going to be guys getting to legs and some crazy stuff happening. So it's, it's going to be exciting. Zane, what do you think? Is it, is it better for you if this match is a super high scoring match or if it's one that's a little bit more controlled? I mean, yeah, it's if it's a wrestling match, it's better than me. Basketball, I don't think I would do too good, but uh, you know, yeah, I'm gonna pull for myself, and I love I love interaction, I love actual wrestling, you know. And I don't think that's a guy who backs away from you know actually trying to make it a wrestling position and and a battle of you know true skill and and feel, you know. And, and I love those kinds of fights, and and this is why I come here. You know, this is a good opponent, and uh, you know, I'm just excited for the match. It's it, it's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, Zane, when I think about, uh, you know, the last year and a half of your career, I think about a guy who, you know, at the Farrell or at the at Senior Nationals has been right in every match, has been um, with some of the top guys at 57 kilos. What would a, a win over Seth Gross mean for your progress towards the Olympic trials? Uh, I mean, it's an exhibition match, so it's not like it uh, on paper. I think it really matters that much. I, it, it's cool to show growth, and it, it gives you uh, confidence that you've been growing. Uh, but so, yeah, like, you know, I, I, it would be a confidence boost going into the trials. But other than that, you know, I feel like data collection is super important, and that's, you know, another reason why I, I'm here. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm here to win, and I'm, I'm here to give myself the best shot possible going into the trials mentally and physically so awesome and seth you've been competing a lot since since everything shut down and you had a, a win recently over thomas gilman how are you feeling coming off that win i mean gilman was kind of i think ranked number one by all accounts and domestically and so to get that win how are you feeling and and you know what does that say about your preparation for this match and, and the olympic trials 
Yeah, it's been unbelievable. I've got a chance to compete a lot, like you said. And it's been been fun getting out there every chance I can and just landing on the line. And, um, you know, hats off to Gilman for, you know, he was the number one guy and be able to, you know, go out there and wrestle me. But it, it was fun. It was great to get that win. And, um, you know, I wasn't – it wasn't my best match ever. But, you know, knowing that there's still things I got to work on and get ready come trials time. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm just blessed to be a part of this amazing event that's going to happen tomorrow and the goal of mine is I, I want to headline an event like this someday. So I, I got to keep keep growing, keep getting better so that, you know, I'm the main event on these cards. So that's, you know, it's fun to be come here, be a part of it, watch some amazing wrestling. But, you know, the goal is, you know, making these Olympic teams, being the main events at stuff. So I got a ways to go and I'm just just looking to be better every time I step on the mat. Zane, talk to me about the, the training situation in Illinois and how you're feeling about about the room there at the Illini RTC. Uh. You know, it's been difficult at times getting into rooms. You know, we've had to transfer a couple different rooms, whichever, you know, lets us open up for COVID restrictions. Uh, but I feel confident in my training. Uh, it Wrestling's a great sport in the sense that I can, you know, really just dictate how I'm going to train. I don't really have to have a ton of help outside of, uh, you know, like a team sport where I need a ton of different people helping me with interactions and things like that. Uh, and I think our training ha has been the best it possibly can be with all things considered. So, uh, you know, Brian Medlin and everyone who's helped us out, our, our donors have, have really been helping us through this tough time. And I really appreciate all their support and help. So I think I've been getting the best training possible. Uh, and, you know, that that's why I came here. If I didn't think I was prepared or I didn't think I was getting good enough training to, for, to wrestle someone like Seth Gross, I wouldn't take the match. But. You know, I'm confident in what we've done and, and in our preparation uh, on standby. So, yeah, that's awesome. Seth, how about you? How's training been? And then, particularly, balancing training with the coaching role? Uh, it's been unbelievable, man. It's been a really cool, cool situation for me because I'm around wrestling 24 7 now. And I feel like I've learned a lot recently just, just being in this role, working with guys and taking bits and pieces. And I've probably been watching more film in the past couple months just just because you know I got to get these guys ready for their matches so it's been interesting I I wasn't really a film guy in college and through my compete competitive career so it's been interesting kind of flipping the script script on that and having to watch film for these guys and getting them ready for their stuff so it's helped me I think uh just just dive into a different aspect of wrestling so it, it's been good and then as far as training it's been you know, just it's just like like Zane said, right? You can you control your comp training completely, and I think I've been doing every single thing I can right. And you know, I've been putting on the line, and I've been thankful to have a situation where we've been be been able to put on you know our own events and get me some matches consistently. And that's been a big thing through this all is you know training can get get long and tiring, and, and always having a goal to go out. You know, when you're going to go out and compete is always always helpful. So it's always have nice having those kind of goals in mind but at the end of the day these these are all preparation for april and um, i'm going to keep trying to get as good as i can until then and that's so cool to hear both you guys so focused so locked in on your training and and it's it's awesome man. you guys took this match last minute and i am confident as you guys are that you're super ready to go so it's going to be awesome last thing adeline gray tamira mensa stock what do you guys think how does this match look uh seth what do you think well i did i mean first of all this is awesome to see this match happen unbelievable i don't think you can get a better women's matchup happening um both just outstanding and unbelievable wrestlers uh, it, it's really hard to pick I, I i talked about this with uh with bone on reader a little bit and I, they both picked adeline i picked uh tamara to win the match i think you know i don't know what the weight advantage or disadvantage is for for either of them and how, how that's gonna look but tamara's looked really good the last couple of years and just looks untouchable i mean adeline has two right she had the one one slip up maybe at the olympics and that was a while back but besides that she's been flawless too so it's it's really hard to really hard to pick but at the end, I'm, I'm going to in this one but i wouldn't be surprised either way awesome zane do you have a prediction for this one uh no point predictions uh but i i do think uh mens is the one that i would take uh as well just because i probably have a little bias knowing her a little bit more. Uh, I don't know Adeline as much, but, although I'm sure she's fantastic too. But uh, I like the way Mensa wrestles, and you know I could see her coming out there and scoring a lot of points and just making it hard to mount a, a real good comeback if you know you just get ahead early. But uh, other than that, you know I, I'm excited just to watch the match. I think this is one of the best and most premier matches that you can watch on a great venue. 
Uh, and so it's, it'll be really cool to, to watch and just see the outcome. Yeah, I'm super excited as well and really excited for the match you guys are going to wrestle. Hey, good luck tomorrow, and uh, we'll, we'll see you there. Yeah, thank you. Thanks yeah, so thank you guys for having me. So this will be, this will be awesome. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, we'll see you guys. And, uh, man, I, I can't wait to see how many points go up in that one. It's going to be it, it's gonna be awesome. We talked about it already, but <laughs> it, it's going to be awesome. It can't be said enough times. Yeah, and, you know. Another match coming up that I'm really excited about. One that it's a weird, it's a weird one. One, <laughs> you know, just after McDonough kind of cemented his coaching position, you never thought this match would happen. It was talked about a long time, and you know, there's similarities in wrestling style and figure and whatnot, but never thought it would actually come to fruition. Yeah, Lezak and and McDonough were two guys who were like. How on earth do they make 125 pounds? Um, you know, a, a Minnesota guy, an Iowa guy that had rivalries with other people over the years, but they never overlapped time wise. And I, I don't know that I would have ever imagined that we were going to be seeing a match in 2021 against Ethan Lee, Zach, and Mac, Matt McDonough in freestyle, up about 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Which I think both these wrestlers are grateful for. <laughs> Oh yeah, that extra. But these are these are like these have to be two of the most prolific weight cutters yeah. of of this or any generation. So um, <laughs> I, I can't wait to talk to these guys. Uh, Matt, Ethan, how you guys doing this morning? Good, doing good. How are you? We're good. We're good. Hey, we were talking. We we were just saying that you guys might be two of the most prolific weight cutters of any generation. Um, obviously, we're gonna have a wrestling match tomorrow. But if this was a, a contest of who could tell the craziest weight cutting story, who who do you think would win? Ethan, what do you think? Hundred percent. Already won. Oh, you already Hands won. Down. Ethan, I've what told do you think? the story on the Bader I, show. I know. I heard it. It was, dude. That story was 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 insane. Um, but Ethan, I have a feeling you've got a, a story or two as well. Oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah. Uh. I got a couple, just 25. Like after season my senior year, I got up to like around like 160. So it's been <laughs> a couple Christmases and Thanksgivings. Had to pull a couple like 15, 20 pounders out there. So, you know, you always <laughs> have those after big holiday seasons. <laughs> well, I'm glad this is a wrestling match, not a weight cutting contest. Um, yeah, you guys are both, you know, huge. have always been huge for 125. Uh Ethan, you never overlap with with Matt McDonough. He was graduated by the time you got to Minnesota. Um, what do you remember from the first time you heard of Matt McDonough, watched him wrestle? You know, when when was the first time that you became aware of him? Um, in high school, I used to always watch like the NCAA finals on TV, so I'd always see him wrestling, and you know, I'd I'm just happy for this opportunity to get to wrestle him, just because you know. He's a guy I've looked up to when I was a kid, wanted to, you know, be at the same level as him. So it's a cool event, you know, get to wrestle him and excited for it. As you were like, you know, in high school, you're watching him, you're thinking, man, I want to be there one day on that stage. Did you ever think you would compete against this guy? Uh, honestly, no, not really. Because, I mean, it's nice now with COVID going on that we're getting these matchups and stuff. So, and I'm just excited to wrestle him so sweet so matt when was the first time that you became aware of ethan he's obviously much you know much younger um what was the first time that you saw him uh probably the year that obviously the year that he had the the infamous gilman match um <laughs> but before that i mean it was pretty well known i was helping gilman and it was pretty well known that the man was uh he was a, a terror on top um and you know, as soon as you take notice of someone, then if you're a student of the sport, you're going to always pay attention to how they're doing and uh, their results, their wrestling, their style, you know, everything about them. As you were preparing, um, preparing Gilman to wrestle Lee Zach, did you pick up anything from that experience of helping to coach against him that, that has been in the back of, my, back of your mind or that you're thinking about coming into this match tomorrow? The heck no, I haven't wrestled for five and a half years. <laughs> I don't, I'm not worried about who I'm wrestling. Are you kidding me? I'm just worried about remembering how to hit single legs again. <laughs> okay. I, think, I think I'll be all right, <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, he's a tough opponent. Um, I, I have respect for all my opponents that I, that I wrestle. And uh, I think that he's a competitor and it'll be a fun match. I, I fully expect him to, to bring the kitchen sink at me and, I mean, that's why I do these. That's why I'm back out here is six minutes to put as many points on the board as I can. 
Awesome. Ethan, how do you go from a guy you used to look up to kind of and maybe even envisioned or trained, I want to train like him, I want to be like him, to flipping that switch to go to go in, okay, this is now a guy I have to compete and I have to beat. Um, I think I just got to take it like any other match, you know, look for what I'm good at and try and get to my ties and not so much focus on like, I don't know, what he's done, like who he is, just treat every match like it's the same and go out there, wrestle hard six minutes and try and get to my uh, takedowns and look for those turns on top. Uh, Matt, you know, you said that the reason that you that you like to compete, you want to take these matches and score as many points as possible. When when did you kind of first think about competing again? When did you, you know, when, when did the first the thought first enter your mind and uh what made you kind of pull the trigger to say, all right, I'm in? Well, naturally, you know, you continue to wrestle in the room as a coach with uh, some of these top guys. Um, you know, over the last three, four years of not competing, I've been in the Iowa room and the Wisconsin room, and you look at the guys around my weight in both those rooms, there's some pretty tough competitors, yeah. uh, multiple of which are on on the card tomorrow. Um, and you just – you think to yourself, well, shoot, I can still hang with them. I can compete. And then I threw out a, threw out a, a couple lines on Twitter when people are asking who's interested or mentioning something, and then all of a sudden you get a phone call like, hey – you want to wrestle so-and-so on this date at this weight, yada, yada. And I'm like, put up or shut up. I mean, I put it out on Twitter. I better do it. So here we are. Man, I'm so glad we're going to see this match happen. Um, I, I don't know that I ever expected it, but but it's one that I'm super excited about. Uh, before before I let you guys go, I want to know what kind of match do you think this is going to be? How do you imagine this looking? Are we going to, you know, it's going to be a ton of points on the board. Is it going to be one guy going to control it? Um, Ethan, how do you see this one going? Um, I could see being a lot of points scored, you know, we're both, you know, high shooters. So I think, you know, there'll be a lot of like, just kind of like turns and, uh, leg attacks going and push out. So I could see it being a high scoring match, hopefully going my favor, but you never know. Just got to wrestle hard six minutes. So Matt, Ethan says a lot of points on the board. Um, what do you think? I mean, we both we both know how to scramble. We both have a similar body type, so I imagine you're going to see some some interesting positions, to say the least. Some positions that maybe a lot of other wrestlers wouldn't be in. Um, but you know, I mean, I fully intend to score a lot of points. That's that's been my been my career. So um, if there aren't a lot of points on the board, then I don't want to say I'll be disappointed, but I'll be I'll be shooting. I'll be trying to trying to get after it. Man, I can't wait to see it. And really glad to have you guys down here. Thanks for, for coming on and, and good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Man, so positions that, that people wouldn't normally put themselves in. Lots of points. Those are the predictions from these guys. That sounds like a match I want to watch. Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, the next one, But we've talked a lot about matches that we maybe didn't expect that we would see, say, a year ago. And this next one is another one just like that, right? Last year. Okay. Yeah, right? We had Nashawn Garrett training for, for the 57-kilo uh, Olympic team. That was his goal. It was he was working towards. We had Joey McKenna training for 65 kilos. And now Nashawn has, has – Decided that he's coming up. He's going to go to 65, but he hasn't had any matches at 65 yet. This is the first one, and what a test. Enjoy McKenna. Yeah, no kidding. This could be huge for either guy leading into the Olympic trials in April. Uh, like you said, Nashon not yet wrestled at 65. He's only wrestled below that, but he's looked all of 65 kills. I don't think he's going to be too undersized. I, yeah, I mean, I thought that was that was my biggest question when I, you know, when we heard about this match was like, how will Nation look at this weight? Will he be big enough? And then, and then the you know, photo comes out on on Instagram, I think, or maybe it was on Twitter with Nation Garrett standing next to James Green, and it was hard to tell which one of these guys yeah. is bigger. It's like this dude is this dude is clearly big enough. So um, anyway, we've got these guys on the line. Let's go ahead and and bring on Joey McKenna and Nation Garrett. Morning, guys. How you doing? Doing amazing. It's doing awesome. well this morning. How about you guys? Doing good. Yeah, doing really good. And man, we were just talking about how how this was not a match that we ever expected to see a year ago. Nation, you were training to rest 57 kilos, Joey 65. Um, 
did you guys ever expect that, that you would have a match against each other? And Nation, let's start with you. No, not no. I never thought I would. I've always been a huge fan of uh, Joey. Uh, watching him up, you know, fifty seven. Watching wrestle one of my teammates, uh, Yanni, and then uh, no, never, never really thought about it. But then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, Joey Wicked is on, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see it. Joey, what do you think? Did you ever, did you ever imagine you'd be wrestling Nation? Uh, in a in a match setting, no. You know, we've trained together in the past few years at national team camps, and then uh, last year he had come into Penn for a week to train, and you know, it was just a fruitful time for both of us. So, um, but I didn't think we'd ever be wrestling in competition. But you know, anything can happen. So anything, here we are. Yeah, yeah, anything can happen for sure. I, I'm really curious about these training sessions. Were there, you know, any things that either of you guys took from those training sessions that that'll be maybe in the back of your mind as you guys compete tomorrow? Joey, was there anything that you remember from Wrestling Nation that that I don't know that you're thinking about? Um, you know, when we were when we were working together, it was more so how can we make each other better and and picking up, you know, little things that each of us were both doing and things that they were doing well to you know, understand better, understand why you're doing these things, kind of how you're, how you're positioning yourself. So, you know, we did talk a lot about motion and, and the power of motion. And when we were training together and, um, you know, the way we're attacking. So, you know, we might each know a little bit about that, but, you know, I think in any wrestling match, we know a lot about our opponents, but <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean anything specific, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's, a, that's a really good point. Nation, did you, did you pick up anything from those training sessions or do you remember anything about, about Joey's game from those? Yeah, dude's strong and, uh, he holds really good position. And, um, the one thing it's interesting, right? When you watch somebody wrestle and then you actually wrestle with them, like there's, um, you, there's like this, you, you think about like styles, you think about, okay, well, if someone has this style, someone has this style, someone is really good at position, someone's good at, at shooting. And, and I think, um, especially when I was wrestling him, I was, I think I was just really impressed, but I was like, oh, okay, wow. Oh, I, how, that's interesting how you got there. Oh, that's interesting how you got to that position. And it just kind of forces you to say, okay, interesting. I want to make these adjustments for myself. And um, I don't think it's, I don't think you look at it when you're training at, with someone as, oh, I'm going to use this against them. I think you use it as, oh, I want to get better too. So wait, how did you do that? And uh, I find myself doing that with people I train with. And, you know, um, especially in the time when I, when I trained with Joey, I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's, that's a nice little interesting grab. Oh, that's a nice little pool that you have. And uh, you just think about how can I, how could I use this so I can be better as opposed to how can I use this against them or how can I, uh, nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And I mean, speaking of training, Nation, one of the really kind of recent developments the last few weeks is you've started training some at the Southeast RTC. How have you found those first few weeks training there? And, and uh, what are some of the things that you're taking from that experience? Oh, man, oh, it, it's it's been a really, really wonderful experience so far. Um, so, you know, I drive up there every um every couple of weekends, maybe a couple of weekends a month, if I can get up there. And uh, at the same time, I'm like run, running my club. And so when I when I am able to go up there, it's all about me uh, being a little bit more meticulous. Um, it's less about like the whole grind and like put, you know, putting all the strain on myself and more about how can I um, how can I get it to click? Uh, what what and I'm always picking the brain. I'm always, uh, especially from James, especially from Fryer, from Brewer, from um, from Roby, like I'm, I'm picking their brains about how can I get this to click in my mind? Because you can do all the work. Um, and how, how I've seen it is you can do all the work, you can put all the time in, but if it doesn't click for you, then it's not, it's not going to be, you, you may not have the best day. And so I'm just like looking to be the best version of myself. And I have to pull from like other, other wells of knowledge and information and wisdom in order to, to find that. And so that's what it's about when I go up there. Yeah, that's cool. Really cool. And, you know, Joey, the, the, PRTC has been a situation where, I mean, it's, it's very unique, right? You've got guys from Penn, guys from Drexel, the guys from Penn, they're in the Ivy league. So they're not going to be competing this year. What's the training environment been like for you there, especially as you know, you, I imagine you have kind of a leadership role with the college guys. Yeah. Um, you know, especially given the college guys not having their season, the Ivy league canceling, you know, we found out that information when we were at the U 23 and junior nationals. So that was tough for those guys to process. 
But luckily, because of cards like this, um, you know, other cards that RTCs are putting on, these guys are still going to have an opportunity to compete. So right now, guys like myself, Dave, and uh, you know, Mark Hall, Ben Hannes, Moro, Ethan, you know, the RTC guys, we're trying to keep that fire alive and, and allow these guys to continue to get excited for training opportunities or uh, sorry, competition opportunities. And in their training, you know, again, just like very similar to what Nation said, a lot, um, just showing them to be more meticulous in different areas and, you know, less about, you know, what is this guy going to do, but knowing what we're going to do when we go out on the mat. And, um, you know, Mark, Mark has been here for a little bit. He's, he's got some great stuff coming in. Some of it's bamboozled me a little bit, but, uh, you know, I'm starting to learn from him a lot more. And with all of our leadership from the RTC trickling down to those college guys, those Penn and Drexel guys are getting so much better day in and day out. And I can see that progress in the year and a half that I've been there. That's great. You know, Nation, you said that for you, uh, it's a lot about making it click, right? And uh, getting to a point where, where things are really clicking. And we saw you at the, at the RTC Cup and you had some matches where it seemed like everything was clicking and then somewhere where, you know, you came up a little bit short. What, you know, what has it been like for you processing that first competition experience back? And how have you made adjustments from that that maybe will help you get it to click tomorrow? Yeah, I think I would say that from last time, it was a lot about what I thought was freedom for myself. So like for my myself, I always think, uh, I want to be the best version of myself. I always want to make sure that I'm putting out the best version of myself and how I define that. And so in my first competition after a year, I'm thinking that freedom looks like me just taking attempts, taking shots, um, putting myself out there, not so much worrying about the technical aspect of it. And because I hadn't been training the technical aspect, I was only training just to go, to go. I was running a lot. Um, I was doing a lot of stance and motion. I was doing a lot of conditioning. And so I felt that I was well conditioned enough to, to just continue to go and go. But then when I realized, I said, I, I wasn't very content with, um, losing. I was like, man, this stinks. Uh, so, so I had to redefine what freedom meant for me. And I'm still in the process of redefining what that means for me. And, um, I think that sometimes the best freedom that we can have is when we create a system for ourselves in which we can excel to our, our best ability. And, um, and so I'm learning how to develop that system. I'm learning how to uh, create uh, the boundaries that I need that won't, you know, I don't need to overshoot. I don't need to, but I can still push the pace. I don't need to um, put myself in these bad positions or um, I don't have to be afraid of certain positions. I can wrestle through it and be patient. And so I think learning to put boundaries and learning to kind of find out and define freedom for myself, I think that that's um, been a, been the one adjustment that I've been, I've been working on, uh, in the, in the last couple of weeks since I've last competed. It's really fascinating to hear you talk about that freedom. In fact, that's something that we talk with Joey a lot about this week on the Bader show. Um, Joey, what is it, what are the, you know, hours between now and tomorrow evening look like for you to get you into that, that frame of mind where you can wrestle freely? Yeah, just a lot of relaxation, uh, staying calm. That that's one thing for sure. Um, you know, Right now, a little bit, little bit over, so staying content with my weight. But, you know, just relying, I mean, even this morning I had a, you know, a little Bible study with my pastor from, from home. And just things like that, you know, focusing on what truly I value in this life and um, what means the most to me. That's, that's what's going to allow me to stay relaxed, stay calm, and, and stay free when it comes to competing tomorrow night. That sounds great. And I'm really excited to see the match. I know a lot of people are, are circling. This as one of their, one of their favorite ones, one of the ones they're most curious about. And, uh, so I think it's going to be great. Good luck. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thank you, man. That one, yeah, that's going to be a great one. And one that, that we haven't seen that I didn't know that we would see. And, and the next one is a lot is of question one. marks. Yeah. Too around all these matches. There's, Big questions around all of them. And, you know, this next one, Emily Schulson versus Aaron Golston. It's like the the young versus the old, again, kind of. You know, we saw Aaron Golston, who was, she was the Emily Schulson of yes. 10 years ago, whatever, you know, winning age-level medals and being on all those age-level teams. Well, that's Emily. 
yeah. now. And now she's getting on to the senior level. She's ready to hear make a name for herself on the senior level. Exactly. I could. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I think about this match. Right. I mean, these are these are two two women who have been having that like world level success from such a young age. Now, you know, yeah, like you said, Aaron was doing the exact thing that Emily's doing now back then. And now that's, you know, Emily's waiting there and she I'm sure would love to to be on that Olympic team at this age. So it's going to be really interesting to see this matchup. It's one that I that, you know, I. Don't know how this one's going to go. Super excited for it. So let's go ahead and bring on Aaron and Emily. How are you guys doing this morning? I'm good. Well, how are you? Good, good. Aaron, I want to I want to hear about your your new training situation. Super exciting news. You're at the Wisconsin RTC, big development. And how, how are you feeling adjusting to Wisconsin and just the training that's going on there? I love it. I visited out there in November just trying to check it out. And I just knew within that really first practice and first week that this was the place for me. I like the energy there. The coaches are awesome. Everyone's super welcoming. And I just actually got my apartment right after Christmas. So I still have a little bit of moving to do, but I'm just really excited for the future. It's a good move. It's awesome. And it's really cool to see, you know, women in, in RTCs in different parts of the country. I think it's a good, a really good sign. Emily, I'm curious to know your training situation. I know you were, when we talked to you last, you were still making a decision about whether to compete on the college scene in the second semester or not. Um, how's training been for you? And, and uh, what role is Augsburg playing right now in your training? My training has been going really well. It, look, it looks like we're gonna have a season this year. And so this past week, I've been at a national team camp in Phoenix, so I came directly from there. And after this, I'm going to go back for another week or so. And then after that, I'll jump into the room at Augsburg. But back home, it sounds like practices are going really well. That's great. You know, and before you guys came on, JD and I were talking, you guys, you know, your careers are interesting, right? Because Emily, you were, you were winning, uh, you know, all of these age level medals and now you, you know, you look and, and, uh, you know, Aaron or Aaron, you're winning all these medals and now Emily, you're doing the same thing. Um, Emily, when's the first time that you were aware of Aaron Golston and, and kind of what, she, what she was accomplishing? I think I met her when I was in high school, probably a freshman or sophomore. I was out at the Olympic training center for a camp and I remember wrestling with her and she was really helpful and she kind of took me in and helped me figure out like just how everything works out there. And so she helped me a lot, just get comfortable with the environment at the training center. Aaron, do you remember, do you remember meeting Emily or do you remember when you first kind of became aware of this, you know, cadet who's, who's starting to have success? Yeah, I heard about Emily years ago. She was winning cadets, all this youth Olympics. And then, yeah, she came out to the uh, OTC and I remember wrestling her and she's actually one of my favorite people when she comes into town to train because we just bounce all these ideas off each other when we're wrestling. So, and I'm happy to hear she's going to be in Arizona. I didn't know that because I'll be in Arizona next week too. So it'll be good to get some training in too after our match. What kind of a match do you guys think this will be? Do you expect it to be high scoring? Does, you know, one of you expect to kind of control the pace? Um, uh, Aaron, let's start with you. I think it'll be high pace because I would say Emily's pretty fast too. And I would think my speed's kind of my biggest asset. And I know Emily's super scrambly. We've wrestled in practices at the OTC. So I think it's going to be definitely an entertaining match for the fans and fun for us to wrestle. Emily, what kind of, what kind of match do you imagine this will be? I think I agree with what Aaron said. I think it's going to be a high scoring match. My goal is always to score points and Aaron's always awesome to wrestle with. So I think it'll be a great match. I'm curious for, for each of you to know how not just this match, but competitions like this are fitting into your preparation for the Olympic trials. Emily, let's start with you. I think it's always good to get the opportunity to compete. Not everyone has had a chance to compete since last spring when everything got shut down. I've been really fortunate. I've been able to wrestle at Beat the Streets and I wrestled here at the eight man bracket and then I'm back here again. So it's been awesome to get these opportunities. I'm really grateful for you guys having me back. Man, glad to have you back. And, and Aaron, how do, how do matches like this fit into your preparation? I think it's fitting in perfectly. Like I'm trying to take as many matches as possible right now because obviously last year with COVID, we had no type of competitions really. So I'm just really thankful, like Emily said, uh, 
we have us on here and you guys are throwing cards because this will be my third one. I wrestled in Iowa November 1st and I wrestled in Wisconsin last month and I have this one this month. So it'd be ideally if I can get a match monthly and that's kind of what's been going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, y'all said you've trained together out at the OTC. Did you take anything away from that that you're going to apply to this match tomorrow night? Uh, Aaron, why don't you go first? Um, yeah, we trained a lot at the OTC, and that's the only time we've really wrestled each other. We haven't done a real match or anything, and I wouldn't say I take anything specifically. I just know, like, we kind of both said we're both pretty high scoring and offensive, so just being ready for that. But there's going to be a lot of attempts from both of us, and it's going to be good. Emily, what about you? Is there anything from, or how does already having your hands on Erin and working out with her affect uh, your match tomorrow? It's been a while since we've trained together, but I think I have a pretty good feel but about like just how she wrestles and we've done a lot of scouting, me and my coaches, and so I think I'm really well prepared. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Um, all right, last thing, main event, we've got, Adeline Gray, Tamira Mensa Stock. It, it's a match that, that I think is really hard to predict. We've asked a lot of people, and, and uh, people are picking both women. How do you guys see this one going? Who, do, can you predict a winner? Um, Emily, can you, can you predict a winner? Well, I don't know if I really want to predict a winner, but I know they're both really tough. Tamira is a freak of nature when it comes to athleticism, so I think it'll be a really fun match. Okay. Aaron, what do you think? That's a tough one. You know, they're my teammates at the OTC. I've seen them wrestle a lot. They both have crazy athleticism, crazy technique. So it's actually very, very hard to predict. I think the key thing is going to maybe be pace and who can get that first takedown and dictate the rest of the match. I think, yeah, when we talked to Tamira and Adeline, I think they kind of said something similar. And and I think actually what we have them like ask each other a question and, and Tamira was like, who's going to score first? And, and uh, of course they were both hoping that, that it would be them, but uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited and really excited for your match as well. Uh, thank you guys for being here and good luck tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, man, super fun match. And that's one that, that could tell us a lot about the, about you know the the 50 kilo weight class at the olympic trials right i Absolutely. think yeah i think currently in our domestic women's freestyle rankings aaron sits at number six emily's number seven so um you know a matchup that tough one to predict too very tough to predict and and one that i mean we don't know how much these kinds of matches are going to play into seating for the olympic trials but you know that 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 six and seven matchup you know that would that would determine whether you wrestle the two or the three seed in the quarterfinals. And that's a, I mean, that's a big yeah, difference. It could be very big. So really exciting match. And that's one that, that I don't know, feels like it has a little bit higher stakes than some of the other, some of the other like absolutely matches where, you know, people are retired, things like that. Um, and another one that's, that's similar. Another match. The next one is, is one that's similar where these two guys both have, have their eyes on that same goal, the 65 kilo spot at the Olympic trials. And, and it's going to be James Green and Pat Lugo. And, and I, I don't know, this is a, another really intriguing matchup. Yeah. We missed out on it at the eight man, but, uh, I'm happy that, that we get to see it tomorrow night. So am I. And we've got the guys on the line. Uh, James, Pat, how are you guys doing this morning? Yes. Can you guys hear me? How are you guys doing? Hmm. Not yet. Doesn't not yet. look like we got us yet. All right. I think we got you now. How are you guys doing this morning? <laughs> good, good. Good, good. good. Awesome. Good, good. Awesome. Hey, Pat, we talked with you about this on the Bader show, but after the eight man, you you sat and watched the rest of the tournament unfold and, and you said you explained that, you know, you were like, I'm gonna soak this in. I'm gonna learn as much as I can. What did you learn watching the rest of that tournament, specifically watching James Green compete? I'm um, learning a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't really know um, how many like details I learned um, about Green, but you know he's a tough competitor. You know he fights every every position really tough. And um, yeah, I mean I guess I main thing I learned is you know fight fight in every position. You know can't relax in you know positions might where you might be able to to relax and focus out. You know you gotta be uh, you know tight and tough in every position. James, I don't know if you got a chance to watch Pat's match with Bajrang. Um, did, did you get a chance to watch that? And if so, 
are there are there things tendencies that, that you're noticing that are that you're gonna be thinking about for tomorrow yeah I, I mean i watch all the matches right it's a great tournament glad to be there um i i noticed some things but obviously every everybody's got different styles for different people um and with that said i think that um if he wrestles how he wrestled Bajrang, then great. Um, I've seen it. Uh, I'll be prepared for that, but I'm, I'm expecting a, something a little different. Um, and I'm also going to be bringing something different to the table. So we'll see, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look to have fun. So. Well, I'm really, I'm interested in that. What, what makes you think that you're going to see something a little bit different? Oh, just because um, I mean, one, I wrestled Marinelli, so I'm sure they're, they're, going back and looking at that um and two uh right he's he's uh from what i've seen with the bodge ring um i don't know if that underhook you know it would be underhook versus underhook i guess but I, i'm sure mine is a little bit better <laughs> all right guess good yeah it's good to hear um pat what do you think are you approaching this match differently than than the one with bodge ring uh, i approach every match the same man doesn't matter who i wrestle it could be, uh, you know, my little brother. Or it could be, you know, Jordan Bros. Doesn't matter. Like, I don't change my style for anyone. I don't change my approach. I don't change my mindset. Um, you know, I just go out there and have some fun, score some points. Yeah, you know, one thing that's changed in the last year is you've switched your your training from from folk style to now full time freestyle. And you've you've had matches throughout this whole kind of pandemic season. What are the, the big gains that you've made as you've transitioned to full-time focus on folk style or on uh, freestyle? Um, my biggest gain, I mean, I think is mental. I mean, I mean, I, I get better every day, whether it's, you know, my physical or mental abilities, doesn't matter. You know, I just get better every day. I feel like, uh, it's not really one specific act, like part of my, you know, arsenal besides my mental game that probably gained the most, um, but yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. James, I mean, the big the big news and the big change for in the last couple of months for you is that, that now your focus is 65 kilos for the Olympic trials. And you've had the opportunity to, to get multiple weigh-ins and you're going to get another one next week at 67 kilos, which is going to be the lowest that you've been so far. Um, how have you how have you been feeling with, with kind of weigh-ins back to back? And, and how are you feeling as you approach not only your match this weekend, but a big, you know, international trip and another way in next week. It's great. Um, I'm just looking, yeah, for the opportunities to get get in and, you know, compete at, at either scratch weight or as close to it. Um, shoot, I, I was trying to wrestle this at six, 67 kilos, but, um, you know, things happen. It doesn't matter. Not that, um, not for the sake of his match or my match, but just for my own sake, I want to get what that would feel like. Um, and luckily that France tournament popped up, so good for me. But um, I, I love it. I love just competing back to back. Um, it makes the weight cut easier. It doesn't have to, you know, you don't get that chance um, after, for example, 150 man bracket in my birthday and that weekend and Christmas kind of spike up a little bit and then have to work <laughs> back down. But uh, yeah, it's being able to, I fly home on Sunday, spend a day, get my things together and I'm off to France on Tuesday. So that's it's just a quick turnaround I, I like it yeah i mean that's yeah that's that's kind of crazy um you know pat how about for you i'm curious you know you competed at 149 how is that 65 kilo for you uh weight class for you to make i mean it's not too bad uh 149 is definitely a little bit easier but you know weight cutting is weight cutting uh if you do it in a, in a you know good amount of time you know shouldn't affect you know how i wrestle or anything like that but it's not it's not too bad like i said but you know that extra whatever four or five pounds it is can uh you know take a toll on your body and your your mental health if you let it uh but you know i don't, I don't try i try not to let uh that affect me so it's all right that's good all right man well i'm excited for the match last question before we let you guys go adeline gray tamira mince stock headline in now that we've moved uh jordan and david to to wednesday how do you guys see that match going and can you can you predict a winner james let's start with you um i believe i said on the beta show that i, I was going with tamara she's you know coming up in weight just i feel like anyone that's typically coming up and feeling fresh they don't have to 
you know, the extra factor of cutting weight um, affecting them. They're wrestling a lot freer. Um, but, yeah, I, I think she's – and they train together, so she can avoid that, you know, take down the lace of Adeline's. I think she she can control the match. But I, I'm – I'm excited to see it. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored. So, um, but yeah, going to Tamara. Pat, do you have a prediction for that one? Um, probably to go with Tamara too. Um, I don't really, I haven't really watched um, much of them wrestle, but I've seen a cl- couple clips here and there. And yeah, I'll probably say Tamara as well. Okay. Well, I'm excited for that one. I'm really excited for you guys' match tomorrow. And uh, thanks a lot for being here and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Like you said, that's a match that, that, you know, we could have seen, uh, last month at the eight man didn't see it then, but we're seeing it now and, uh, should be, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Pat Lee goes a guy that's really surprised me. Um, obviously, you know, number one seed at NCA is very talented, but he's looked very good in freestyle as well so far. I think my first memories of, of Pat Lugo were, were freestyle, were Fargo tournaments mm-hmm. where he had like these really impressive performances. And, you know, a guy from Florida, you don't always get to see those Florida guys compete as often. And, and uh, I remember seeing him and being really impressed in, in freestyle. And then, of course, he had a very solid college career. And it's like, yeah, now he seems like he's kind of getting back to that style that, that maybe is the one that he has the greatest potential in. So I'm excited for, for his developing career for sure. Absolutely. This next match is one that we have seen in the past, but not for a while. And some things have changed since then. For for one, the last time we saw Jaden Cox and Hayden Zilmer wrestle is 92 kilos. Now they're up at 97. Um, and and uh, so it's been two and a half years, and, and I'm excited to see this match happen again. What do you think about this one? Yeah, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of people, myself included, are really excited to watch Jaden wrestle. You know, it's been so long we've been able to watch. Uh, Hayden, he's competed a couple times uh since march or or february but uh, it'll be interesting to see where jane's at and at 97. yeah i'm really curious and we've got him on the line um hayden jaden how are you guys doing this morning doing great great i'm wonderful that's awesome we were just talking about the last time you guys met that was back in 2018 and you know a few things have have changed since then one it's it's up in 97 kilos and jaden this is i think just the second time you've competed at 97 since making that decision. How are you feeling heading into this this competition with the opportunity to, to wrestle at 97 kilos? I feel great because I, I, I'm excited, um, not only because it's the first match back in a long time for me, but also because I feel that I have filled the weight out a lot better. I know the first time that I wrestled there, I was still walking around at like 205, 207. And so being able to fill out that weight and uh, and still be able to keep my motion and flexibility um, has been awesome. And going through this process, I think maybe the the time off uh, was something I probably, you know, I don't know if I needed it, but it's something I definitely took advantage of. That's great to hear. Um, and, you know, Hayden, the last time you guys wrestled, a, a few things were different. For one, you were still splitting time between freestyle and Greco, and now you've kind of transitioned to full-time freestyle focus. Um, what adjustments have you have you made? How have you grown in your career since 2018? And, and uh, how do you expect that to impact this match tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. No, so, uh, yeah, I, back then I was training both styles, but, uh, you know, now just digging deeper into freestyle and a little bit more of freestyle mentality and, and tactics. So I, I think that helps me out a lot, and I've, I've improved a lot. So That's great. Um, Jaden, you know, you said you've, you've grown into this weight. You're feeling, you're feeling stronger, more fleshed out at, at 97 kilos. What would a strong performance tomorrow mean for you? What, what would you take away from that? What would it tell you about your preparedness for kind of your big goals at 97? Well, I mean, honestly, it would just tell me what I need to work on when I get back. Um, you know, I think it also would tell me that we are working in the right areas. Uh, I think it's important for me to get these matches in. That's why I'm appreciative that Hayden took this match so that um, I can definitely feel out, you know, how um, I want or need or need to wrestle at 97 kilos to prepare to take on those bigger goals and those bigger challenges. So um, a big performance here, a great performance here would mean um, and mean a great deal to me, my coaching staff, and my training partners to let us know we're on the right path and we feel that we are. So uh, I'm excited to showcase you know, everything that uh, – I've been working on and then uh, put a good show out there. Yeah. Hayden, you know, when people talk about 97 kilos in the U S a lot of the conversation is, is 
Kyle Snyder, Jaden Cox, and, and then there's everybody else, right? Do you feel like you get overlooked in that conversation? And does that, you know, impact how you think about this match with Jaden tomorrow? Yeah, no, um, for sure. Those guys are the, the top dogs and, and they prove themselves. So it's, it's a great opportunity for me to wrestle and compete and, uh, and, and learn from, from this match and, and from wrestling and, and show what I got to, you know, to do to wrestle, to be that top guys, you know, get my name in the mix there. So for sure, it, it's just a great opportunity for me. Do you, um, you know, do you feel like, well, you've been competing right over this, over this break. This is Jaden's first match back. Do you feel like that gives you any kind of an advantage tomorrow? Um, yeah, you know, I think so. I think anytime you get a chance to compete, you know, there's just a different feel. Um, you just got a different mindset. So it's great that I've had matches leading up and, and, you know, this, I think it's only going to help me for sure. So. Jaden, when you've wrestled, um, when you wrestled Hayden Zilmer in 2018, you guys had three matches. One was, was two zero on a couple step outs. One was a uh, tech when you got your transition to lace. And then one was in the middle. Um, what are the adjustments that you're going to have to make? Or what are the things you're going to have to do to, to try to open it up? Um, I think mainly it's just, you know, stay focused on keeping the pressure on, uh, you know, I think some of the times that we've wrestled, um, I've kind of either played, played into his game a little bit or, or let him slow me down. And, uh, you know, he's done a great job of it. I mean, I think that's something that, uh, that people have to do, but I, I've kind of realized some things out on my time off and in my wrestling that have allowed that to not be the case. And I also realized how much of that is dependent on me because, um, I allow that to happen. I allow those things to happen. Um, and, and so if I am able and willing to, uh, to not do that and not play into that game, um, I think that's going to be better for me. You know, I think that's one of my advantages. Um, but once again, you know, Hayden's Hayden's good at what Hayden does and he's done a good job of, of, of neutralizing me in the past. And so um, and plus, I mean, he's dangerous as well. So it kind of makes it hard sometimes because there's some situations I don't want to get into with Hayden. Like I don't want to get into, a, you know, moving around and cut, get caught up upper body with Hayden. I think people underestimate how much of a double threat he really is um, in every position, especially with his Gre Greco background. Um, so it's definitely something where I need to make sure that I'm just getting to my positions, my attacks and keeping it going um, and, and creating more than waiting for something to be there. Interesting. Hayden, what do you think? I'm, you know, you've, you had those three matches in the past. It's been a long time since then, but are there things that you took from there and, and what are the adjustments you're going to have to make to get over the hump against Jaden? Yeah, no, I, I need to score points. That's my biggest thing. And, and I know Jaden, he's, he's proven himself uh, all over the world that he's hard to score on. So um, that's my biggest thing. I got to score points, and um, I, I've been working on a lot of uh, mental game things on, you know, from you know, translating from wrestling so hard in practice to, you know, kind of maybe taking a step back in competition. So I need to come out firing, and I need to just, you know, put the pressure on and, and wrestle my pace and, and get the things that I need to get to. Awesome. Well, I mean, man, super excited. I need to score points, too. I need to score points, yeah. too. I, I'm going to add that to my list. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to forget. Yeah, you don't want to forget to do that. Nobody should forget to score the points. Um, yeah, that's 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 good. Uh, you know, I know, Jaden, when we talked earlier this week, we asked you to make a prediction, uh, and and I think you said you, you, had a, you had a hard time choosing between Adeline and Tamira because they're so close. After having more time to think, are, have you been able to narrow it down? Honestly, no. <laughs> no, okay. I because the more I think about it, the more complicated it gets, and – I think I'm excited for this match. This match is this this match is historic. You know, I think I think it's just as historic. Uh, you know, along the lines with um, with the with the Jordan Burroughs DT um, matchup. So I mean, like, I think this match is huge, and um, and I think it's great. It's extremely great for women's wrestling, for wrestling in general. And I'm excited to watch it. I'm excited to be here for it and to get to see it in person. And so we'll see how it goes down. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how the match is going to roll. I couldn't even give you like a play by play on it, but, um, it's something that I have to see. That's my, it makes it more of a reason why you need to watch. You need to tune in the flow and watch that match. We got to see this. Yeah. I'm super excited. And, and Hayden, I'm wondering when you think about that match, um, uh, kind of the, you know, now the new main event, how do you see that match going between Adeline Gray and Tamira Mensa stock? And I think it's going to be good. It's sweet. Um, different different weight classes colliding a little bit, and it'll be fun to watch, just to watch those two battle it out. I'm kind of the same thing. I don't know which way it's going to go. It's definitely uh, probably something everybody's been wanting to see. So, 
yeah, well, no predictions, but I, I agree. It's it's a really hard match to predict. It's going to be really fun. I'm excited for that one. Really excited for your match as well, guys. And uh, good luck as you prepare between now and tomorrow. Thank you for having us, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks. All right. Well, that's going to be time. it's going to be a good one. Yeah, main event time, and uh, we've you know got it up on the screen here. It's five time world champ Adeline Gray. She's been making senior level world teams since 2009. When she was still a junior, she made she made world teams. She made junior and senior world teams in 09 and in 11. Um, she's been on the scene for for as long as anybody. And Tamira Mensa Stock, also world champ. She's somebody that's that came to the sport a little bit later and has just been growing and growing in her career. And uh, we saw these two wrestle in 2017 under really unusual circumstances. Now they're they've they've both proven that they're the best in the world and at separate weights and now we're going to see this match happen uh i can't wait yeah there's a reason uh so many people today have had trouble making predictions or just say i won't because i don't know it i don't know like it it's just it's going to be great yeah it's going to be really exciting match um you know and and yeah, they're both Tamir and Adeline were, were working out at the same time last night at the at the hotel, and there's just like there's a different energy when when these women are on the mat, right? It's 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 exciting. People are um, you know just a looser, like more excited uh, atmosphere environment. I think we're gonna see that in the main event tomorrow night, and uh, I'm really really excited to see it. So we're gonna get these ladies ready to roll here in just a second, and and then bring them on. But um, yeah, I think this is going to be a, a lot of fun. Six six world titles on the mat at the same time, and uh, I don't know. Do, do you, and not yeah. just you know world titles, but these are two of the best pound for pound women in the in the world. Probably you know two, definitely in the top five pound for pound in the U.S. But then expanded to the world, it it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. And uh, I think we're just about ready to, to, to bring these women on. Um, Adeline, Tamira, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, let's bring them on. Now, the main event of the evening, and that's a surprise that we all just found out very recently. I'm curious, the spotlight's grown a little bit. Do you guys feel any different now that the match is, is the main event instead of the co-main event? Uh, Adeline, let's start with you. I definitely think there's a little bit of difference. Um, you know, being the main card is a, is an honor and a highlight for sure. And uh, I think we're the first women to kind of highlight a, a major card in a long time. So looking forward to it, excited. Um, it, we just got the information just minutes ago, kind of like with everybody else. But uh, <laughs> no one even like asked us. So they're just like, you're the main card. I'm like, oh, cool. We're the main <laughs> card. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Tamira, what, how do you feel about that change? Um, I'm a little flustered and I feel like, uh yeah i i wasn't ready for it and um i'm a, like i have just so many mixed emotions about it but at the same time i'm like like adeline just said she just made a valid point we're a main card on the flow of it so i was like used to saying co-main event co-main event now it's main event y'all y'all are like this it's just it's great and it's an honor and yeah i i really i, I think i'm i'm gonna start appreciating it more uh as uh, the day goes on and by the time it's there tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's such a high profile match. I've, I've been seeing a lot of people saying that this is the biggest match in U.S. women's wrestling history. Um, I, I don't know if you guys agree. When you hear that, do, do you agree? And, and how do you feel hearing people say that, Tamira? Um, I would have to agree. Like this is a, a super, super match. Like you have Adeline Gray, a phenomenal wrestler, arguably like the, the best wrestler in the world. And then you have me, a coming up star who is there to just be able to give her just such an amazing challenge. And when you have two people coming from different weight classes that can actually handle each other, it's going to be like, like I, like I have posted on my social media, Clash of the Titans. And it's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. And I, I can say like, this is definitely the biggest, in my opinion, arguably the best wrestling women's match. Like what what else could there be? You have two super champions coming to just go at it. Like, yeah. like yeah. go on. <laughs> You're totally right. Adeline, do you, do you agree? Yeah, I, I was saying that um, it isn't just about the United States. Like I think we're a big matchup obviously for here, but globally, I think the world should be watching with the, uh, 
us two going out there. I mean, we're both ranked number one going into the Olympics. We're both returning and reigning world champs. I mean, we're ready to battle and ready to go out there and put on a show. And um, it's going to be exciting because uh, Tamara and I train together pretty often. And so I think um, she's a little bit lighter than me at the moment. So I'm going to struggle with her speed and I'm a little bit bigger than her. Um, and she's going to struggle with kind of my size, but we're going to figure it out and hopefully put on a, a great match tomorrow. You know, you guys, we talked about this on the beta show, right? But you guys wrestled a, a match in 2017 under really unusual circumstances. Um, Tamira, what, what's changed since that match or what things have you taken from that match that, that you think may be helpful in preparing for tomorrow? Finish your shots, don't double leg, and have a better mental game going in. <laughs> Because those were the biggest things. Like I just kept getting it on her legs and I just get crushed by her, just by her size. And I'd be like, oh man, what is going on? And I just wasn't very confident in finishing my shots and just going into that match. I was just like there to have fun, like I'm doing now. But now I, I just feel like I'm just way more prepared because we've wrestled a lot more since then. And it's also been uh, what you like three or two, three years. And I actually have a world title under my belt. So I've been under like the immense pressure and I've just gotten better. So yeah, I've de I think I've just definitely improved. Adeline, you know, you, you said earlier that you guys train together a lot. We talked to some other people earlier, you know, on this press conference that have talked about that when you're training together, I mean, sometimes you take things that can help you beat them, but other times you're just, you're trying to make yourself better. You're trying to kind of pick up their techniques to make your own, your own style better. So I'm curious, is there anything that you've taken away from those training sessions with T Tamira that you think will give you an edge tomorrow? Um, I don't know about just in between us, but I know that when we are challenging each other in, uh, in practice and in our uh, live bouts, she definitely has a few things that I have to adjust to. And I, I know one of them being um, when I finish one of my shots, she has incredible hip control and I've had to adjust my hand placement. And it's something that my coach is always like, put your hand back. I'm like, you do it and tell me how to finish this shot. And then we can talk. And he goes in there and tries it. He's like, I have no idea how she's doing that. So I have learned how to adjust and make those, uh, you know, those little minor things that might not look like the right thing to do um, from a technique standpoint, but I definitely think it's the right thing to do on Tamara. So I think we both might have some of those pieces. Um, I know I have a little bit more fear going into this match because uh, I've taught Tamara how to defend some of my best attacks. And so she um, is going to put up a fight in some areas that typically I would tech people in in matches. So this match might go on past this first period. Um, and that uh, for sure is going to end up in some interesting situations. And it's always kind of fun though. Um, I, I know that Tamara and I get in some positions that we just kind of end up laughing sometimes. We're like, how do we end up, end up like both on the top of our heads? Like, I don't even know what happened. <laughs> so it should be, it should be an exciting match for sure. You should see possibly some positions that um, both of us are not very used to. <laughs> Yeah. I, Tamira, as Adeline was describing, like what she takes from training, I saw you kind of nodding uh, and laughing a little bit, right? What, uh, what, what would you add to, to Adeline's description of what she's taken from these training sessions? Um, what I'd add is Adeline is correct. Uh, she, uh, she definitely has been, uh, training me a lot. Like I, I have some stuff on my own, but Adeline has just been molding me not to, not necessarily to beat her, but just to be, um, more cognizant of the positions that I'm in. And she, like, if, if I'm on my back or if I'm in a position, she stops it. She's like, no, stop. You see this? You're supposed to be here. And like, she'll adjust me and I'm like, oh, okay. All right. I got it. And then I like start driving. She's like, yeah, that was good. And she's been teaching me so many things in parterre, how to defend it. And also like just attacking. And she's just been such a monumental asset in my wrestling game. And uh, like she said, like when it comes to our scrambles, we'll be going live and all of a sudden we'll start cracking up and just trying to get the upper hand on, um, on the both of us. And uh, well, we get into like just some weird positions, not not positions where like we'll be hurting each other, but just like both of us have each other's legs or like she said, like we're on the on the tops of our head. Like, wh what are we doing right now? Like, all right, let's let's detangle this. This is weird. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely just a joy to watch. And for us actually to showcase uh, what we just do behind the scenes, it's uh, it's going to be a treat for everybody and it's going to be natural for us.
Yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the, that familiarity you guys have with each other is one of the things that makes this so, such a fantastic match. So interesting. And, and just to hear that it's so often that you guys back and forth. I mean, that plus obviously all the, the success you guys have had makes this a huge match. And one other thing that makes it a huge match is just, it, it's a, it's a, there's a lot on the line, right? It's, you guys have both said it, this might be the biggest women's match in history. And um, so I'm curious to know how each of you prepare for not just matches, but big matches. There are only a handful in your life, probably as big as this, or that feel as big as this. What are the things that each of you do kind of the day leading up to a really big match? Uh, Tamira, let's start with you. The day leading up to a big match, I make sure I'm on weight, first of all, because uh, that's the biggest thing. Um, I'm also typically in my room, just kind of being very sedentary, not really um, going out much, nibbling on some food, watching my animes. It really calms me down. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm practically motionless, honestly. And uh, it, it helps me to relax knowing that um, I've done everything leading up to that big competition. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much, I'm, I'm kind of like just sedentary. All right. Adeline, what about you? How do you get ready, get yourself ready for a big match like this? Uh, I typically don't wrestle the day before um, the, a competition. So I, I do try to make sure I get a workout in, um, just try to have a pretty normal day minus the workout. So I still try to dedicate some of those workout times to some sort of fitness, whether that be a stretch or some cardio, if my weight's not great. Um, and then making sure that whatever stress kind of that is going on in my life gets handled or pushed back and uh, just uh, have some, you know, I think we all have skill sets that we try to tap into to decrease that stress leading into those major tournaments or major events. And um, I know that I lean on my support system in those moments to make sure that that stress can kind of be kind of contained until after the bout or after the match. Yeah, man, sounds makes sense. That's that's cool. You know, we've been asking everybody to predict a winner of this match and and people are are on all kind. you know, people have, have picked both of you. It's, it's going to be a match that everybody's really curious to see. I want to know, is there one other match on this card that you guys are, are most looking forward to? Um, Adeline, is there one that, that you've circled as like, oh, I'm really curious about this one? Um, there was. Who... It's someone like nondescript in the middle of the card. What can you read me off one of the middle? Yeah. So okay. Well, we got we got Makia Moran, um, Heaton Zavala, Jackson uh, Mahalik, Gross Richards, Lizak McDonough, Garrett McKenna, Shilson Golston. I think Garrett McKenna yeah. is who I was thinking about. Yes. Garrett McKenna, I think, is going to be a very, like right now. I feel like it's a little bit underrated. Like middle of the card, it kind of feels like you guys put that one in there, like we were supposed to not know it was there. And I think that's <laughs> going to be in. an awesome match. <laughs> I mean, I think the techniques from, from both of those athletes are going to be able, and I, I think that matchup is going to be really fun to to watch. I hope I'm done with my warm up by the time and actually get to experience it. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Is there one Tamira that you're excited about? Um, honestly, I'm not choosy. I'm excited for all of them. I plan to watch as many as I can because I just love being in the area and just watching just such a phenomenal, phenomenal technique. So I plan on just watching all. Of course, I have my my favorites on. Oh, I think I think that person's gonna win. But I'm curious as to how they'll win. But I I don't like stating who I think uh, will win. But I, I I'm excited for all of them. Well, yeah, me too. And especially excited for the main event. Super glad that you guys are here. Can't wait for the match. Good luck tomorrow. And we'll see you guys there. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. See you guys. Nice. And JD, <laughs> six Hello. world titles on the line in the main event. Adeline Gray, Tamira Mensa stock. And of course, that Jordan Burroughs, David Taylor match. We'll get that on Wednesday. Yeah, um, now we nice. We get a little midweek fun now too. Double event. And we still get 10 awesome matches yeah it's funny you know you hear that Tomorrow. you hear that news initially and it's like oh no and then you think about it, it's like wait a minute now we get two great events uh and and a, a new headliner tomorrow definitely a match that that deserves to be the headliner um so i'm super excited about it thank you for tuning in and we will see you tomorrow as adeline gray tamira mensa stock headline these amazing 10 matches here in austin texas we'll see you tomorrow